Greetings, and welcome to episode 60. Today's episode is bound to rouse feathers because we're going to be discussing parenting. Uh, if you have children, you've probably been to all the places I'm probably going to take us down through. But if you don't have children, this will be your warning not to. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid. Anyway, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, parenting. L let me start off by first saying one of the things I realized as a parent is that this cord is tangled. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I first realized. What I first realized about being a parent is that you shouldn't have children until you're where you want to be in life. And I don't necessarily mean financially, but I do also mean financially. But what I do mean by that, the main point, is the person you want to be in your life, not some ego-driven material mass but the real person you want to be in life because that's the person they're going to see growing up if they're watching you grow up as they grow up they're not gonna do very well either they're gonna do as good as you did at that moment and there's nothing you can do about it because they will learn more from watching you than from what you have to say because the one thing I've learned and it's not just children that do this anyone that loves you anyone that you love they don't want to fucking hear it but somebody else that's outside their immediate circle could give them the exact same advice you do and it could be your kid your wife your girlfriend and you know what they're gonna do they're gonna go oh I never thought of that, even though you just told him that the day before. <laughs> so, you have to be mindful of who you are more than what you're trying to teach. Because they're going to learn more from what you do, the way you live. They're going to learn more from that than they ever will from you actually sitting them down and trying to teach them. Fact. No, I can't say that. There's, there are exceptions to every rule. I can say that this is true for all of my children. It was true for me growing up. There was a lot of things that I grew up with that I had to actually take great effort to avoid doing those things. And some things that I had to take great effort to do because they just weren't a part of my experience growing up. And also, I mean, it's not just, and bear in mind, it's not just you as the, if you're a single parent, if you're in, in a marriage or whatever relationship, bear in mind that this is only as it pertains to you. This is not how the other, uh, the other parent affects you, which affects the, the parenting style also because <clears throat> if the two parenting styles are in conflict that's what the kids gonna see constant conflict you have to come to the understanding that you have to compromise you have to respect even if you don't agree you still have to respect the ideas of the other parent unless <clears throat> excuse me Unless, God forbid, they're just really stupid ideas. I mean, and that, that happens sometimes. If they're just really stupid ideas, the only thing I've learned to get a parent off of the stupid idea bandwagon is to let them live out their little stupid idea. And then they'll say, oh, <laughs> do you have any suggestions? Oh, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but a person who has an idea, this is why that they, if someone has a stupid idea, and I say stupid idea because 
there's no other thing you can call it but a stupid idea. But when a person has a stupid idea, they will cling to it just because you told them they were wrong. If you tell them, yeah, let's do it that way, they'll immediately start to question their idea. <laughs> I usually say something like, well, all right, if you think that's the best, or something to that effect, and I usually end up being right, and my idea gets used. And that doesn't necessarily mean that this idea was stupid. It just means that my idea was better. <laughs> but bear in mind that I don't always have the better idea. That doesn't mean I have the stupid ideas. That just means that my ideas are not always the best choice. Because there are many things, many, 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 many things that you have to take into consideration. And see, this is where people get messed up. When people look at parenting, they're looking at the politics of it. You've got to look at the people involved in the situation. Because it's not just the, the politics is how well people get along. That's politics. Parenting is dealing with the soul, that, that soul within that suit. What does it take to nurture that soul to make that soul happy because the one thing I realized is there really is no such thing as children I mean you don't tell your children this because they'll, they oh they'd lord it over you <laughs> my children I noticed when they were born they didn't strike me as children they struck they struck me as from a mental and emotional capacity fully functioning adults that lacked motor skills and life experience and it's easy to lose sight of that because when I was teaching along those lines when I was trying to raise my kids along those lines which is damn near impossible when you have another parent to deal with who has their own ideas about parenting when I was parenting along those lines, everything was going smoothly. The girls had respect. They had love, kindness. They had everything they wanted. But it only worked when I was able to do it. Once the other aspects, the politics, enters in, it, it familial politics will ruin any parenting style. Any parenting style and then you're all you're left with is reward punishment mom dad good cop bad cop and kids that can't wait to try and get away with something that's what it turns it devolves into that and all it takes is one non-participating parent and what I mean by non-participating all they're doing is they're going through and they're regurgitating what happened to them growing up instead of actually being an active participant in the familial relationship because that's what it is it's not just a family it's a family relationship these are the closest bonds you will have are the ones in your roof in your roof under your roof <laughs> ain't none but rats and squirrels in the roof <laughs> you don't you, you might not want to have a good relationship with them yeah you might who knows? You might be the squirrel, the squirrel, squirrel whisperer. <laughs> anyway, one thing I've learned about myself through parenting was that people, uh, you, you hear it all the time. Oh, when you're ready, or I want to be ready, you will never be ready. Ever. Nothing prepares you for it. All the books written, all the people, blah, 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 blah. blah. And because if you'll notice, 95% of the parenting books out there were written by people that don't have kids. All the advice you get on the TV, oh, yes, I'm a therapist. I got right out. You have kids? No, but I learned so much reading books. <laughs> books don't puke on you. <laughs> Books don't pee on you. You will never change a shitty book diaper. <laughs> 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 
you never know. Why do you never know? Because each child is its own individual person with its own individual personality that hasn't really come into full force yet, but it's not a completely blank slate when it comes out at all. All it's missing is life experience. Those of us that are parents know this. It's, it's a wonder. Don't tell me you never looked at your child and was just amazed that this, this is a thing. All it lacks is experience. What does experience teach you? What has it taught you this far? Timing. How to be tactful. How to choose your battles. Right? The kid doesn't know that. Kids just, wow, I want what I want, and I'm going to get what I'm going to get, and if I'm not, I'm going to scream till your ears bleed. <laughs> God forbid if you have another kid, <clears throat> and then you get the jealous sibling thing going on. When my wife and I got together, she had a child that was eight months old. And, uh, Everything was wonderful. And then she, my wife got pregnant and we had her second child, my third child. And, uh, oh, the politics changed because now we have to make up for the deficit in the attention that the one child was getting because now there's another child getting attention. All the potty training that had been going on for the last six months to a year was completely undone because, well, she's wearing diapers. I want to wear diapers, too. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's only cute the first day, really. <laughs> it's not cute after that. <laughs> oh... And we planned it that way, too. Before the baby's born, we're going to have to get her potty trained. Yeah, let's get her potty trained because then we won't have to change one diaper for one kid. No, 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 no. Because the one kid saw that the other kid got to wear diapers and the one kid wanted to wear diapers, too. So we had two kids in diapers. Politics. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get things you never realize that children realize. My youngest daughter could tell that she was my biological daughter and that my other daughter was not. And whenever I would play with my stepdaughter, my daughter would give me dirty looks and start being mean to me. And she would like demand special treatment and I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. It's another thing about parenting they don't tell you is if you're not consistent and fair, that affects the emotional development of the child or children as the case may be. But likewise, if one of those children perceives that something is being done unfairly you have the exact same emotional effect on that child so what the one child views so what the one child views as unfair is actually equal treatment not one getting treated better than the other but to the child, that's not fair. I'm your biological daughter. That aspect has always, since my daughter was born, has always been a factor in the relationship between me and her, her and her mother, her and her sister. 
It has always been a factor. That little girl will be 12 this year. And it is still a factor. And f things that I've seen in most families, when I was growing up, the stepchild did get treated a little less fair than the rest of the kids. So I made it a point to not do that. And I even caught my wife doing that, and I nipped it in the bud real quick. I said, you can't do that. You can't just snub the one because this one's ours. And you don't, ha you know, you don't really care for her dad, but you still care for her. Can't snub the one over the other. And honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I've actually questioned whether that was the right decision. Perhaps I was supposed to give my daughter special treatment. Or preferential treatment. I have questioned it. Because not doing that has affected her emotionally and mentally. Because how do you explain to a child that hasn't yet had the experience and won't understand until they have the experience that being a parent is less about genetics and more about choosing to create a bond with that child? And you can poo-poo that, but my ex and my oldest daughter lived five houses down the street from me for three years. And my daughter only came to see me when she wanted money. Or when she wanted something. And it was always an awkward kind of interaction. Like a, hey, how's the weather? <clears throat> but my son, who grew up 2,000 miles away from me, when we get together, we're like the best of friends. <laughs> we hang out. We go do shit. <laughs> yeah. That emotional bond is a choice. It has nothing to do with genetics. Because my son, some of my son's siblings, I feel like they're my kids too. Because I love them. Because I was there when they were little kids. I've heard his older sister Candy, my son's older sister Candy, even told me, I wish you were my dad. And I've told her, I wish you were my kid. That would be awesome. I've always felt like she was my daughter. And he has an older brother uh, also that I would claim as my son any day. His name's Jamie. But that's not the point. The point is, bonds aren't genetic. They're, they're, it's a choice. It's a choice you make to love someone or not love someone. But for a child, these choices are based on information gathered from usually one or the other parents. And I'm not going to get into that. Let's just say some really shitty parenting was involved. <laughs> and see, I, you thought I was going to teach you how to be a parent. No, I'm trying to tell you, you're not alone in not being a perfect parent. None of us are perfect parents, nor will we be perfect parents. Do not make a mistake and try and hide from it, because you'll just turn yourself into one of those parents, and you'll raise one of those kids, and you don't want to do that. You make your mistakes, you take your lumps, you take your lumps and you take your chances, just like the rest of us. You don't hide from yourself because you made a mistake. Because then you're t trying to tell your kid that, oh, that never happened, I'm perfect. No, you're not perfect, you fucked up. Own it. Allow your kid to own that, what happened to them. So they're not growing up all crooked and broken. Because you know what, the first thing that's going to happen is, you're going to make a mistake, whatever that mistake is, and you're going to fucking hide from it, which is going to tell the kid that, well, we got to pretend that that never happened. And then on top of that, you're going to use them as your emotional dumping ground to hide from that spot. So you're telling your kid, here, 
this is what happened, but it didn't happen. Hold on to that and never speak of it again. Huh? And you want well-rounded what's? <laughs> Don't do it. If you make a mistake, own it. I own every mistake. When I screw up to my kids, I apologize. Why? Because when they screw up to me, I make them apologize. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to make them do anything I wouldn't do myself. I'm not above my own rules. And you can't be above your own rules either. Well, how come I don't get to drink? Well, that's a privilege that gets you get when you're 21. I'm over 21. That's why I get to drink. It's the law. has nothing to do with household rules. That's the law. Oh. So, in some instances, thank God for Big Brother, but in other instances, yeah, he can go fuck himself. Not the point. <clears throat> and let's, let's kind of turn our focus away from the child for a minute. Let's focus on the two parents. It is very rare to come across two parents with the exact same parenting style. You may have the same base parenting style. Let's say I'm an authoritarian parenting style. Well, my my wife is the friend parenting style. Well, she'll bend like a reed in the wind so that the kids like her as opposed to putting her foot down and getting their respect. And so when the stuff hits the fan, so to speak, the kids never listen to her. And then I have to play the heavy. Good cop, the whole good cop, bad cop thing. And one day I finally told her, look, you need to start disciplining these kids or I'm going to stop disciplining these kids. And then what are you going to do? You won't have me to fall back on. And that put her in the unique position to have to start putting her foot down. What she does now, not as often as I do, but m I would say at least 50% more than she used to, which is a dramatic improvement on her part. Because I don't want to be the heavy, because when the dad's the heavy, the kid's whole life, dad is the last person they want to interact with when they get older, because dad's the heavy. Yes, I am the primary lawgiver, but I don't want to be the primary uh, uh, Punisher, pardon me. You know, share the share the joy. You know, because if, if the kids like you, that means they hate me. Because someone has to discipline them. Now, I have, like I said, I have an authoritarian parenting style. That's the difference between. A Republican and a democracy. Uh, we have a republic, a system ruled by laws. So we have a democratic republic, is what we have. We have a system of laws governed by majority rule, and it works fine in the house because no, the kids can't like pay one of the adults off to to get what they want. <laughs> <laughs> But let me tell you, if they could. <laughs> we would do that. There's five bucks, Dad. Oh, oh yeah. She ain't ready. <laughs> no, but for real. When you have two different parenting styles, like my wife and I, that creates conflict because you're usually at odds with what you think should happen. Now, you have to understand that her different parenting style is not really so different than my parenting style. She has an authoritarian base parenting style, but has the, the weepy, I want my friends to like me. <laughs> buffer on it so it doesn't work very well. You can't be authoritarian but hey please like me. You either they either you trying to get your kids to like you or you're trying to raise your kids. Also like I said before, when the two parents come to an impasse and they can't seem to get around it, 
just take a step back respect the views of the other person there is no right or wrong way to parent be a parent if you're a parent you're doing it wrong I don't care who you are <laughs> Whatever you're doing is the wrong thing. It's not, well, maybe we should do her idea. No, she's wrong too. Why? How do I know? She's a parent. <laughs> you don't realize you're doing it wrong until you've already fucked it up. Already. <laughs> if you realize that you could have done things differently, Congratulations, you're a bad parent. <laughs> relax. I'm not calling CPS. Relax. Let that wash over you for a minute. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> ah, none of us perfect. And it was a factor of everything. It wasn't just your decisions that caused that. I, you need to know that part. It was a mix of your decisions that you let, you, you didn't stand your ground with your decisions. That's what I should say because let's face it, when we first start out, it isn't just good intentions. At the end, when they're almost out the door, it's all just good intentions. Oh God, I'm just trying to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning, you're actually doing a good job. And then what happens? Life happens. You've got work. You've got the other parent to deal with. You've got uh, probably other kids that are older to deal with. Okay? You have family to deal with. And by the time it's all said and done, you're left with so little of what you started with that you really don't have a choice. My parenting style started out authoritarian. This isn't something I adopted after a while of thinking that, well, I'm, maybe I'm wrong in what I'm doing. No, I started out that way because the one thing I noticed about other parents' parenting style, they turn into authoritarians later, like when the kid is around nine, ten years old. So this is what happens. This is what I saw and this is why I did it the way I did it. Parent lets the kid run amok and do whatever they want hands him that 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 what do they call it carte blanche <laughs> that white card actually it's that 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 platinum card of limitless credit and you know what it says on the card he's just a kid and if it's a girl it says she's just a kid and so for the first five or six years they go around swiping that card everywhere I broke some shit. Just a kid. Look at me with my potty mouth. Just a kid. <laughs> Talking back, breaking shit, being loud, you name it. And I'm swiping my card. I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. Okay? And so you get that for the first five or six years. And now this behavior is now a habit. And now the parent is starting to see that well, maybe there's a problem with the where this child is going. And so they spend the next six or seven years trying to rein them back in and then puberty hits <laughs> right when you almost got it <laughs> this is what I saw and see I didn't see that growing up my parents put the smack down from day one and kept the smack down up until the release for good behavior <laughs> And so I took the best of both worlds. Give the child just enough rope to hang himself. But don't cut them down until they realize that hanging themselves is a bad idea. And I used to hear this all the time. You're too hard on those kids. They're just kids. You're too hard on those kids. They're just kids. But now my kids aren't little assholes. Well, they just hit puberty. So their little asshole phase just started. This isn't something I had to rein in. It just started. <laughs> well, my one child, I would swear she's a bit autistic because she's like 
very hyper emotional and I, I know she gets that from dad because dad's an empath and she has real trouble dealing with intense emotions she does not like being embarrassed she does not like getting caught doing anything in other words guilt she cannot handle guilt at all but then I can't I haven't met a woman or any female that can handle any amount of guilt so uh, can't handle anger can't handle guilt can't handle she can't handle any emotion actually because any positive emotion and you get the same reaction only in a positive way instead of a fit she's all Bleh! and you're like whoa <laughs> imagine an angel possessing a child and making their head spin around instead of a demon that's pretty much the same this just <laughs> But yeah, she's an empath like that, and I tried to teach her to control it. I've tried to this and tried that, but of course, but you're my dad. Anything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> but when she gets older, when she becomes a teenager, maybe moves out, she's going to meet people that know how to do that, know how to control that. And they're going to teach it to her. And she's going to be like, oh, yeah, nobody ever tried teaching me that before. <laughs> anyway, as long as she learns it, it doesn't matter who she learns it from, right? Right. <clears throat> but those same people that were poo-pooing my parenting style now applaud that parenting style because I didn't let them run amok and do whatever. Because that's not what you're supposed to do. Because behaviors become habits. They're no longer just be doing it because it's their mood they're in. Now they're doing it because there's a ha it's a habit, and now something in the environment has triggered it instead of it actually being a genuine, just a flow of their life. So, parenting style matters. Don't put yourself in a position to have to switch up later. Because trying to rein it in, it'd be like getting a dog, not teaching it anything for the first five years, and then spending the next five to six years trying to teach it how to actually properly behave itself. See how well that works for you. If you don't have kids, you see how well that works for you. If you do have kids, you already know what I'm talking about. So what I did, instead of letting them run amok and then spending six years trying to chase them down and put a leash on them and then rein them back in I put the clamps down on them the day, the day they popped out and then every year they get one link one chain link clink 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 and then when they turn 18 I release the chain and they can go do whatever they want because my job isn't to be their friend or to be well liked my job is to prepare them for the real world. My wife and I sugarcoat nothing. We don't let the, we don't we don't let them believe that the world out there is like it's on TV and everything's happy and good and everyone's always got a roof and food. No, we're teaching them from day one about credit. We're teaching them about from day one that everything costs money, so be prepared. We're teaching them from day one that you've got to have a jobby job. <laughs> Because nothing sucks worse than disillusionment. Oh my god. <laughs> disillusionment sucks. Because you think the world is a certain way and then when it hits you, it doesn't say, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. No, it hits you. It knocks you the fuck out. <laughs> and I would spare, if I can't spare my children anything else, I would spare my children that. <clears throat> My children are well-adjusted children. They're good kids. Just like with school, I don't demand good grades. I demand the best grades they can bring me. My only rule for school is do the work. And if you're going to do the work, do your best. If your best is C's, bring me C's. but do your best. Telling my children that completely alleviated them of their stress for school. They both made honor roll. 
my oldest that lives with me has made uh, honor roll principal's list and was accepted to the honor society so I'm doing something right that don't make me the perfect parent or even dad of the year but I'm doing something right uh, yeah anyway I could keep going on and on and on and on and on for hours why because my oldest is 19 this year so I've got that much stuff I could talk about but we're getting on past the 30 minute mark and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up because <clears throat> if you have kids you already know all this you probably were scared to admit any of this stuff to yourself but you already know all this if you don't have kids I'm not really trying to scare you off of having them but be forewarned <laughs> anyway if you have enjoyed this video please click the like button you can favorite the video if you like uh, please leave comments down below because I like this to be a discussion because if you have kids you probably have something to say about what I have had to say uh, yeah but if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information about this and a myriad of other things then go ahead and click the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs>